Where thou art, man hath not, nothing good in deed or thought, nothing free from taint of ill. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Dear faithful, please bear with me. I find it very difficult to preach to an empty room. But uh, today we have Pentecost Sunday, the Sunday where we commemorate many things. We commemorate this birth of the church on Pentecost, where the church already existing because it was founded by the state of Lake, Lake Tiberius when our Lord told St. Peter, feed my lambs, feed my sheep, was brought forth into the world today on Pentecost. It was manifest to the world when the apostles, inspired by the Holy Ghost, moved by the gifts of the Holy Ghost, came out into the world to preach it. And it's also the day that we really commemorate the presence of the Holy Ghost among us. It's one of those few times in the year when we really think about the Holy Ghost. There are, some authors call the Holy Ghost the forgotten person of the Blessed Trinity. We, we think about the Father and the Son often. When we pray, we're praying to the Father. When we go to Mass, we know that we're offering up the sacrifice of the Son. When we receive the sacraments, we know that we're taking advantage of the sacraments that he instituted to receive the graces that he merited for us. We unite ourselves to the Son to offer up the sacrifice that he offers to, to the Father. It's even hard for us to think about Son without thinking about Father, for us to think about Father without thinking about Son, just because of the very name itself. But the Holy Ghost is a, somebody that usually we think about only a couple times a year on Pentecost, and then maybe on the day of, of confirmations when the bishop comes around to give us the sacrament of confirmation. But otherwise, we kind of relegate him to the background of our spiritual life. The Father and the Son are part of the everyday realities of our spiritual life, the prayer, our prayers, our sacraments, but the Holy Ghost again is kind of forgotten. And this place that we put him in kind of the background of our spiritual life, this obscure corner where we bring him out once a year is very much at odds with what our understanding of the Holy Ghost should be. The Holy Ghost is called by the church, the sanctifier. It's the job of the Holy Ghost to make us holy, to form us in the image of Christ. And that's not something that just happens twice a year. We know that, not just on Pentecost and, and uh, confirmations, but it happens at every moment throughout our life. Every time that we're presented with a grace to follow, every time we're given efficient grace to follow through with the grace given us to grow in virtue, all of these things are, are actions of the Holy Ghost, these things which sanctify us and conform us to Christ. The Holy Ghost does this very much through his presence, always in us with the entire Blessed Trinity, but also by the gifts of the Holy Ghost, which he uses in us. So we could say that the, the job of the Holy Ghost, the mission that he's given, is the formation of Christ on earth. It's the incarnation. So that even though we, we call the Father the Father, when we speak about our Lord coming into the world, about the conception, the womb of the Blessed Virgin, we don't say that the Father descended upon the Blessed Virgin Mary. We say that the Holy Ghost descended upon the Blessed Virgin Mary. Again, it's because it's his job to form Christ in this world. This happened at the Annunciation when the Holy Ghost descended on the Blessed Virgin Mary, but it, he forms also the image of Christ on earth in the mystical body of Christ by his presence always among us, and especially by his influence of the gifts of the Holy Ghost. And the gifts of the Holy Ghost are a special way that he does this. So God wants us to uh, take part in sanctifying ourselves. And because of that, he gives us the infused virtues. We know we have faith, hope, charity, prudence, justice, fortitude, and temperance, all given to us at the moment of our baptism to complete this newborn spiritual organism that we become by our baptism when we're re reborn in Christ by the Holy Ghost. And it's these infused virtues that we use to move ourselves towards sanctification. We, we often speak about the analogy is the boat and the oars, where we, we have oars to move ourselves, but the gifts of the Holy Ghost is when the, the Holy Ghost comes in like a sail and moves us himself. And so if we want to keep with the 
analogy that it's the job of the Holy Ghost to form Christ in souls on earth, then we might liken the, the Holy Ghost to an artist who wants to, to make something, let's say out of a, a block of marble, and at the same time wants to give his apprentices a chance to take part in the, that work of forming this image in the block of marble. And so when the artist would lay out his tools, he would bring his apprentice in, he would give him a job to knock out the rough bits, to get it to the general shape. He would give him instruction, he would guide him, he would give him example. But then finally, when it comes to the finishing touches, when it comes to completing his masterpiece, he himself would, would step in, he would pick up his tools, and he would finish. Why? Because, because the, the apprentice is limited in this understanding of, of how these tools work because the apprentice doesn't have in mind that model, that image that the artist wants to create as perfectly as, as the master does himself. And so the master who knows who he's making this, this statue of comes in and he's able to delicately finish his masterpiece. And again, this is what the Holy Ghost does with us. He gives us the virtues, the, these divine instruments in human hands and we move ourselves towards our sanctification. We form Christ in ourselves. But when our own human mode of understanding, our own human mode of acting, our own knowledge of Christ is limited, the Holy Ghost himself steps in, takes us up by the, the gifts of the Holy Ghost, and forms Christ in us. So the gifts of the Holy Ghost aren't there just for big moments when you're going to be martyred or if you want to write a brilliant treatise because you're a doctor of the church, the Holy Ghost stepping in to, to take over. No, but they're there. They should be there often in this forming of Christ and the work of our sanctification. Is the Holy Ghost the sanctifier? And so he's something, somebody, he's someone that we ought to think about often because he is there performing this work of sanctification of our souls. And do we think about him often? when we find that our, our human understanding, our human mode of acting, our human strength is limited, do we turn to the Holy Ghost? Well, one example that I always use um, for the gifts of the Holy Ghost is, is that of St. James and John. So we remember when St. James and John, uh, all of the apostles are traveling with our Lord through a part of Samaria, and uh, one of the cities doesn't want to have anything to do with him. They reject him. St. James and John turn to our Lord and say, you want us to uh, have some fire rain down on the city? And we'll, we'll pray and fire will rain down on the city and we'll, uh, we'll oust these, these guys. And uh, our Lord says, you know not of what spirit you are. But the Holy Ghost, um, excuse me, but, but the apostles, in, in my opinion, I think were doing a pretty good job. It seemed like they had a lot of virtues acting at that moment. They had a real love, a real charity for Christ, where they were stricken to see him rejected. At the same time, they have the virtue of justice. They see that Christ has been rejected and they want a kind of retribution. They have faith. They're able to, they believe not that their, their faith is able to move mountains, but that it's able to rain fire down from heaven. They, they seriously ask our Lord, do you want us to pray and have fire rain down from heaven? And they sincerely believe that this is going, the prayer will be answered. So they seem to be doing a pretty good job, I think, as far as things go. But our Lord doesn't say, make it so he says he says you know not of what spirit you are so they had these divine tools these virtues but still in human hands and when they were trying to use them they they were clumsy about it and they acted according to a, a human spirit not according to the divine spirit not according to the gifts of the holy ghost and so this is what the Holy Ghost wants to do with us in our life. And we need to turn and pray for the intercession of the Holy Ghost. Are prayers to the Holy Ghost part of our, our repertoire? Are they part of our, our daily spiritual prayer routine, part of the prayers that we normally say? You know, we have very great devotions to certain saints when we lose something immediately. St. Anthony, there's no hesitation. We go to St. Anthony. But when we find ourselves at a loss, when we find ourselves to our own human strength, too weak, our human understanding, to, uh, to cloud it, do we immediately turn to the Holy Ghost and pray to him? When we have the many difficult crosses that we have to bear, do we turn to the Holy Ghost? If maybe we have a, a child who's no longer practicing the faith or something like that, and we, 
we have to decide to try to use our virtues well and we say well i want to to still practice charity towards this child who's who's no longer practicing the faith but at the same time i do want to practice my own faith and not not be weak in my own faith or water down my faith but i want to draw him in i don't want to push him away what do i do and uh, we have virtues we want to practice but we don't understand how to balance them how to do that well do we immediately turn to the holy ghost and pray for that do we stop and say a prayer to the holy ghost do we ever make use of a novena to the holy ghost when we have problems like that and we ought to and when we don't have time to to pray a novena when we don't have time to even say the, the come holy ghost do we at least turn and say an ejaculatory prayer to the Holy Ghost, imploring his help when we, we don't know how to proceed in a given situation. And so we, we ought to do that during this, this time of Pentecost, throughout our entire, our entire spiritual life, but especially in the time after Pentecost. It's interesting, all of the, the different seasons in uh, the liturgical year compared to Pentecost are pretty short. It's, it's when we think about Pentecost and the time after Pentecost, it lasts most of the year and yet is the holy ghost on our mind during that large chunk of the year so we want to turn to the holy ghost and, and ask him to use his his gifts in us knowing that that without him we can't do anything knowing that it's he who works this formation of our soul in christ and the father and of the son of the holy ghost Amen.